بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد إخلاص لله as we mentioned before is the assas or foundation for our deeds to be accepted as the scholars maintain that sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala along with following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are the two conditions to have our deeds accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So always question every act of worship that you're doing or you see. See, you see someone, I know often we're amazed by certain people they call scholars in the West, mufti so-and-so, sheikh so-and-so is coming to the masjid. But always look to see are they following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The sincerity we won't be able to determine unless you can see some outward actions of theirs which exhibit insincerity that they want to show off they want to be famous I remember myself going into one of the masajid in my locality and I said to a man he was showing a video on the wall or some pictures and I uh, of people and things like this and I said to him you know is that lawful is that permissible this was uh, quite some time ago many many years ago and he said to me he said, no, don't worry, I'm a sheikh. And I felt that was the strangest thing, especially after having had the benefit of having traveled abroad and studied and, and seen some real ulama, you know, ulama of Ahl Sunnah, like Sheikh, sheikh Mukhbil bin Hadi al Wadi wa Ghairihi, rahmatullah alayhi. But to hear this man consider himself and, and to put himself forward, he could have commanded the good and forbid the bad. If, if he was correct in what he was doing, it only required for him to say, um, we studied the issue or it, it's permissible and I, I'll, I'll give you some of the evidences later. But he didn't have to say, I'm a sheikh, I know. This is a very strange thing and I don't see the scholars of Islam uh, in my experience. Uh, I've never seen anything like this. So this to me exhibited a lack of sincerity. And one of the scholars, as it was related to me recently, one of the mashaykh that we study with here from time to time, we sit in his lessons. He's an alam, he's on the Hayat to Kibar ulama Sheikh uh, Muhammad Mukhtar Shanqiti, half of Allah Ta'ala. And he mentioned something about sincerity. He mentioned that regarding da'wah and regarding scholarship and, and so forth and ilm, that it, it's about sincerity. If you're sincere with Allah, Allah will raise you. It doesn't matter, you don't have to advertise yourself. You don't have to go here and there and, and, and yell from the mountaintops that I'm a sheikh and I'm this and I'm this and please put this on the flyer and I need to do this and it. no. Your efforts with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be rewarded. So even if you don't, for the person who desires fame, who doesn't gain fame, if they're sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by not desiring fame, Allah is going to raise them. Uh, one of the talabat al-ilm related to me that Imam Qurtubi, great Imam Qurtubi, had no students. I believe it was Imam Qurtubi, uh, uh, one of the great uh, imma to tafsir and fiqh, that he did not have any students. But his book, a thousand years later or more, we still read and benefit from. We still read and benefit from. That you won't find hardly in the libraries of the imma and the, 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 the Muslim scholars, the absence of this book. You'll find this book there. Because Allah raised him from his sincerity. How many of the ulama we could mention in every madhab, even the four imams, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam uh, uh, Malik bin Anas, Imam Shafi'i, Imam Ahmed, the four a'imma, and other than them are so many. They're remembered, why? For their sincerity. So that's why we have to encourage one another and strive to be sincere in what we do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي al kareem فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ 
فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا يشرك بعبادة ربه أحدا. Allah subhanahu wa taala says, whoever desires to meet his Lord, then do righteous deeds. And do not commit shirk and worship with uh, with his Lord, or, and then he should not commit shirk, shirk uh, or, or ascribe partners with his Lord, anyone. Ahada, meaning ala itlaq, there's no exception, no one, no partners in worship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> that ayat there has so many benefits, and it shows us a stern warning against shirk and showing off. And it encourages us to have sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullah alayhi, he said, فَالْأَمْلُ الصَّالِحِ لَا بُدْ أَنْ يَرَادَ بِهِ وَجْهِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى لَا يَقْبُلُ مِنَ الْعَمَلِ إِلَّا مَا أُرِيدَ بِهِ وَجْهُ وَحْتَهُ Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullah alayhi, he said, then righteous deeds, it is imperative that the person wants is seeking the face of Allah, seeking the pleasure of Allah, doing it for the sake of Allah the Almighty. For verily Allah the Almighty does not accept deeds, except that the person does it for seeking his uh, pleasure only. Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyum, the student of Shaykh, one of the students of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahumullah jami'an, he said, muwaddihan ahamiyata ikhlas wa makanatuhu. Or the Shaykh said this, he said this and in order to make clear the importance of sincerity and ikhlas lillah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the level or the importance of ikhlas, of having sincerity to Allah. Qala Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Al-amlu bi ghayri ikhlas wa la iqtida' kal musafiri yamla'u jarabuhu ramlan yuthkiluhu wa la yanfa'uhu. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, deeds done without sincerity and without a strict adherence, meaning adherence to the uh, sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is like the musafir, the one who travels, is like the traveler who fills his sack with sand to make it heavy and then he gains no benefit. Because look, the traveler, imagine yourself traveling. And traveling, as the Prophet ﷺ, is a nur, it's a type of punishment. It's difficult. As in my situation, I'm packing up my books, it's very difficult. You're emptying things, you're packing, you're struggling, you're moving. It's very difficult. And, uh, and, and time consuming and stressful at times. Imagine the person who's a traveler. And they fill their sack with sand of all things. I can't imagine, none of us can imagine uh, sand. And of course, in the time of Ibn al-Qayyum and through most of history, people traveled on animals or by foot, or possibly by ship, but not like the luxury forms of, uh, luxurious tra forms of travel that we possess now. So imagine a person filling up all of these boxes and all of these bags with only sand, making them very heavy. They get to their destination without any benefit, only stress and hardship. That's the similitude Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala made with regards to ikhlas, the person who does not have sincerity to Allah, who does all of these deeds. He gives da'wah, he holds conferences, he uh, performs pil the pilgrimage, he prays always in the masjid. Uh, fast on Mondays and Thursdays, all, doing all of these deeds, but not for the sake of Allah, 
this person is like the person who carried all the carried all those goods on their on their journey, but it was just filled with sand. The only benefit is maybe it made their muscles a little bigger, or it, it caused them hardship in their back and stress. Why? Because there's no benefit. There's only harm. So by not being sincere to Allah, you will only harm yourself. You won't benefit yourself. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of those who have sincerity to Him. And bless us to be of those whose deeds are not wasted in this life. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with Jannah to Firdaus. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم